welcome to the show. It's Wrestling With Entertainment, the only audio experience on the web today. Previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, and everything in between every Saturday. And interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Tuesday and Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox. Sponsored by Rogue Energy and Hail One Coffee. I am of course your host, that guy, James J. Alongside the leader of Squad Squad, Calico Yachts, who should be joining us in a little bit. But who is here already? The American Scooter Dust. Yeah, you know, it, it's funny because for the first time, I got my Amazon grocery delivery ahead of schedule and with a lot of something extra. I didn't order. Well, you know, miracles do happen once in a while. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but unfortunately, they were uh, value bo- uh, packages of uh, K cups, and unfortunately, uh, my father got rid of the Keurig without asking if I wanted to keep it, which I did. But let's get back to something positive. <laughs> well. Uh, going from wrestling with Scooter's family to wrestling with entertainment. <laughs> it was a good week for wrestling with as we um, interviewed uh, Nayo Robles. Um, our first interview from um, um, not she's from somewhere. <laughs> Puerto Rico. There we go. <coughs> yeah, it's going to be one of those episodes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, of course, an interview from Puerto Rico, incredible interview, incredible individual. If you haven't already, um, um, you know, followed her on Instagram and um, Twitter, um, you'll, be, you'll see that she is doing some incredible things as of right now with some uh, big-time names. So definitely um, go follow her. And then uh, last Wednesday, we interviewed um, the Amazon Aisa Raymond, uh, our first ever interview from Jamaica. Um, incredible interview, incredible individual, lots of fun content to, um, to explore in that one. But that does bring us to um, this upcoming Tuesday and Wednesday. We have um, on Tuesday, Joe, um, the dad by demigod, uh, Joey Mayberry, um, another uh, wrestler from um, the Chicago area. We talk about that, about um, a rival moment. We talk um, plusy bears, action figures, um, Effie's Big Gay Brunch, and a hell of a lot more. Definitely go check that out on uh, Tuesday. And then this Wednesday, we have Mitch Clark of the Rads. Um, we talk about him denying the mandatory um, face turn. Uh, we talk about wrestling Tom Lawler um, and um, Timothy Thatcher. We talk about um, his hatred of Sega Genesis and a hell of a lot more. Definitely go check those out. If you don't believe me, here's some uh, clips now. In here, and I look over in the corner, and Dark Sheik is standing there, and she's just behind this giant, giant fan that's like blowing, and I just see her like nod her head a little bit to the right, like hey, just take a step back. And I do that, and I feel that fan hit me. And I don't know what face I made, but it had to be, like, euphoric whenever that hit me because I just see her just sit there and, like, get this big, like, shit-eating grin just going, yeah, that's what you needed. I was like... <laughs> I think it was great. The mandatory face talk um, that you did not actually take part in, huh? No, I... Um, I was not a part of that, hence why I'm still through and through. I'm a heel, you know what I mean? You can't court order me nothing. You know what I mean? You gotta find me first. You gotta serve me those papers first. We're not playing pretend, you know, but we are. 
but we're not. Um, you know, you know what I mean? Like for me, you can't make me do nothing. I'm one of those kids growing up. I definitely had ODD, which is oppositional divide disorder. You tell me to do one thing, I'm a stubborn, angry, bitter old man. You can't make me do nothing, court ordered or otherwise. I was not a part of that match. You can't make me do nothing. So, um, you know, they want to try it out. They're doing great on it. They're getting a good shine off of it. Not for me. You know what I mean? So, I was not a part of that court ordered appearance. All right. And then on the 23rd, we have Olivia Bill. On the 24th, we have Christura. On the 29th, we have um, Celine Gray. On the 30th, we have Sexy Eddie. May 1st, we have Psycho Boy Father. And on the 8th of May, we have uh, Reed Matthews. So um, a lot of interviews. Um, and just, you know, obviously, uh, Reed was announced uh, earlier this week. Um, and you can always check out our Twitter, um, at Wrestling with E, for information on who went to win and when we're interviewing them as well. All right, I think we're done putting ourselves over Scooter now. I'd say we are. Well, we are wrestling with the news, and um, starting off with a bit of bad news, um, the, Yo- uh, the Aki Bono has yes. passed away. Um, uh, people may have known him best for his, um, his match against the Big Show at WrestleMania 21, the first ever and only, uh, sumo match in WrestleMania history. Um, he was the only, he was the first guy to, uh, obtain the, the rank of Aki Bono as well. Um, so definitely, um, a big loss, not just for the wrestling community, but um, the sumo community as well. Um, is there anything you'd like to add, Scooter? Um, honestly, no, it sums it up uh, perfectly. Um, Aki Bono's most uh, well-known WWE moment is... Yeah, the sumo match against Big Show at twenty WrestleMania twenty one. I also remember him having a match on SmackDown uh, against Caprice Coleman. Yeah. Yep. Uh. For those who don't know, Capri, uh, Caprice Coleman is now a commentary mainstay for Ring of Honor. At least he's, I still think he is. He's also the um, the spokesperson for Caprice Sun. <laughs> yeah, I could use a Caprice Sun actually. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So yeah. All joking aside, um, our thoughts and prayers go out to the friends and family of um, Akiba. Uh, rest in peace. All right. Um, somebody else that's resting in peace this week, or maybe not in peace, is AEW. Um, WWE arguably had the biggest week of the company's history last week with WrestleMania, and we will be talking all about that uh, in our second segment tonight. Um, But first, we will be talking about AEW's response, um, arguably the worst week in AEW history. Um, On Wednesday, they released the video footage, the... um, of CM Punk um, putting Jack Perry in the front face lock, um, the move that essentially cost CM Punk, um, causing him to get fired um, from AEW. Um, on this, you know what? No, let let's start with that for right now. Um, did you see the footage, and what was your thoughts on it? I personally will not watch 
the footage. I choose to not watch it. Uh, and feeling like most of the uh, individuals involved uh, didn't want it to be aired to begin with. So I, 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 I don't need to see it for being as uh, as much of a fan slash reporter on pro wrestling as I that I am. So I, I just leave it at at is as is because is seeing the footage really going to change anybody's mind? You know, for the people that may have thought that CM Punk was the problem in this uh, in this whole situation, yeah. Um, almost, uh, I'm, I don't know if you listened to the, the rest of the Ariel Hawani interview, um, but essentially, word for word, what CM Punk said happened actually did happen. You know, it wasn't, you know, this big atrocity that call it needed every se- every single, you know, security guard in the place to break these two men apart. You know, it was a lot more mundane than people may have thought it was. And plus, it makes Jack Perry look like an absolute bitch. Um, was this a a uh, a response to CM Punk? Um, you know, commenting on what happened. Was this AEW's response to get some publicity on them because WrestleMania did so well, or was this just to get people talking about AEW in general because? When was the last time we've talked about AEW? Oh. Uh, I'll. I think I can sum this up with uh, simply quoting the Dynamite's main event from this past Wednesday. Yeah. What was it? Samoa Joe defending the world championship against another Rhodes. Dollar Tree, Cody Rhodes, and Roman Reigns. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, if if we really think about this logically, if, if we're going by age, it would be uh, technically Cody would be the dime store or, uh, version of Cody, considering that there's twenty years between them. Yeah, but I mean, who re- main evented WrestleMania and who? Uh, main evented a show that only maybe 8 million people watched? Uh, true, true. Uh, but just, I mean, this all, it also may have had uh, something to do with uh, Dustin and Ricky Starks being photographed in uh, the uh, uh, in the uh, WrestleMania uh, you know lounge box or press box whatever and, and you know, they were celebrating having a good time and and given that this is now the you know the the Paul Levesque era, uh, and we'll, we'll we'll get to the uh, that uh, segment when we do. It, it it's a, again it see it's more of that you know. Uh, 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 he's a, of Tony Khan being a uh, billionaire 
Nepo baby, as I've heard the term now, uh, playing with money and try expecting the same results that the WWE are getting out of AEW, uh, which is the legal uh, definition of insanity. Trying something over and over again and uh, expecting different results each time, but generally the same. It it it's just Tony Khan figuring since he is going to have no help in uh, responding. To anything, it, it it just shows that Tony just likes piggybacking off of other, you know, of WWE news, good or bad. Right. You know, it's definitely you know. The word when it comes to Tony Khan, nepotism. Um, this was a desperate ploy to try and garner some type of, you know, reaction um, from fans, get people talking about AEW. Um, you know, Eric Bischoff would say, you know, any publicity is good publicity. But when... Somebody says that, you know, your company is a, it isn't actually a company that, you know, it's just what it is. And you release footage that reinforces that. It doesn't make you look good. It makes you look worse. And, you know, like you said, Dustin Rhodes versus Samoa Joe, you know, I wonder how that came about. It's just, it's exactly what Punk said. You know, AEW will continue to exist as long as Tony Khan wants to put money into it. And, you know, that's just, I just hope nobody gets hurt in this whole event show. Uh, you know, we've come yeah. close to, we had many of wrestlers come really close to utter atrocity, atrocities in an AW ring. And I hope that, you know, that doesn't actually come to be as we, you know, continue with AEW the way it is. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, the other little piece of news that came out of Wednesday was, um, you know, depending on who you ask, um, uh, Triple H kind of, when he was on uh, the Pat McAfee show, I believe, he kind of took a shot at Will Ospreay, question mm -hmm. mark, yeah. um, and Will decided to um, respond on Dynamite. Um, saying that he uh, that he isn't in there in it for the grind, but how did you get that your job as head of the company by grinding on the boss's daughter? Um, yeah, real uh, a plus promoing deal. No, see, no one believed me when I said Will Osprey it wouldn't be good long term for AEW. <laughs> Uh, you know, normally I'm 95 of uh, my predictions, uh, you know, when the wrestlers are released, are, they're going, you know, back to the WWE or, or whatnot, and, and, you know, or when free agents are available. They'll most likely go to WWE. 
That's those are ninety five percent of uh, my predictions. Will Osprey was never in that ninety five percent. Um, it it's like it's like. I expected that th- there was a big sign right uh right next to the uh and right next to gorilla position that says go low as you possibly go as fucking low as you possibly can no there's one of those um one of those poles for you conga no um, where you go underneath the uh the pole? Limbo, limbo, so limbo. limbo poles. How low can you go? How low can you go? It's in. It's in. It. It is l- literal. Uh, insanity, especially when you've. Essentially, lost. You were you lost your biggest homegrown talent, who was having their first match, first you know real match, under you know, real circumstances, on the grandest stage of them all. And we'll get to that uh, in the in the next bit. So it's. There's no doubt in my mind Tony was really trying to piggyback off of anything coming out of WrestleMania. And the fu- the funny thing is is that for the first for the first time on camera at a WWE event uh Nick Khan was front and center. Yeah. Um, the only Khan that matters. And Nick Khan has stated, and and Triple H is completely on board with collaborating with other promotions. They, they are now in the frame of mind where we want to work with all these independent promotions. We don't want, we don't want us to be the glass ceiling, you know, if it were. And they want to show that there doesn't have to be a glass ceiling at all. In certain uh, areas of the business, yes, there are st- still some, but it's 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 amazing to finally see that, and when you know, when Tony was just okay, uh, what can I give you? So that we can be associated with you legally on paper. It's you know it's it's not you know, AEW really scouting talent themselves. WWE does have that. Right. So again. Tony piggybacking in almost every wrong way conceivable. It is worth mentioning uh, that um, that uh, Ariel Hawani, the one that uh, conducted the interview with um, CM Punk and longtime rival of Tony Khan. Um, he retweeted the footage, and AEW hit him with a copyright strike. 
um, on Twitter. So I'm sure that that was worth, you know, all the trouble that they went through to get it done, you know, sticking it to that, you know, real reporter. Fuck Ariel Hawani, Dave Meltzer's who I get my news from. You can't detect the sarcasm in my voice, you're, mis <laughs> <laughs> you're misunderstood. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It... <laughs> It's just so it's so ridiculous to say yeah. that Tony Khan is trolling Ariel Hawani. <laughs> like he literally has a vendetta against this guy. <sighs> but yeah. Um keeping up on a little bit more of AEW news, uh they released all of uh, their scheduled pay-per-views uh, coming out for the rest of the year uh, with dates and uh, locations. Uh, and if I'm being honest, it's nothing to really write home about. I'm not sure if you saw it, but... Um, uh, I actually didn't even know it was released. Yeah, so... Didn't seem like there was any buzz towards it or like where they was going. I think they were in like Tacoma, Washington for World's End. Um, uh, 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 this... it, uh, I, it, would they have done? Tacoma so soon after uh, Wrestle Dream? Because Wrestle Dream was in. Uh, that was, was, it, was like. It, uh, was that Port? Was like a while ago. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, you know, being in Seattle. I mean, keep in mind this is the same company that went to Chicago literally every three months. Yeah, all right, fair enough. That um, that being said, um, and we're going to get into all things WrestleMania, you know, um, in our next segment. But watching, actually watching WrestleMania, there was one thing that was missing. Um, can you? Do you, do you know what it was, Scooter? One thing missing. If if you're gonna say Mike Rome, no. Uh, no. What I was referring to is a location for WrestleMania Forty One. Um, you, you know, usually. WrestleMania, um, whatever, you know, there's usually a promo package for where WrestleMania the next year will be. The, of course, the r rumor for 41 has always, uh, been, uh, somewhere central in the U.S., uh, Uh, it's uh, most m most likely uh, Minneapolis. Uh, so was, I, I think, yeah. Um, it was in you know, Minneapolis, Minnesota, or it was going to be Las Vegas. Those were the two front runners as of. Um, as of this recording, yeah. um, we... and and I know what Coleco would say. Who is going to um Minneapolis? Like, what's there for them to actually do? I mean, obviously they have a big stadium, but like, 
is a it's just a big stadium all they need. Um, you know, who who says, hey, I'm gonna travel to America for the first time. I'm gonna go to Minneapolis. You know what I mean? If they're Vikings fan, sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, people were coming all the way from other countries, and the same happened uh, in February, where people came from other countries to Australia. So, I don't think, uh, yeah, the lo- uh, the announcement of the location. Uh, of next year's WrestleMania is uh, it's not a primary interest uh, right now considering that literally (laughs) there was another uh, PLE uh, announced that would not only play home to a fri- episode of Friday Night SmackDown, but then to the King and Queen of the Ring. Oh, that's right. In uh, uh, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi, Saudi Arabia. So, so at least. You know, we, I mean, it does appear like we are finally going back to the one PLE per month. Uh, since we have, we have backlash, backlash France, as people would say. Uh, then there was uh, money in the bank. Which in Ontario, uh, in 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 Toronto, July uh, the fourth of July weekend, uh, SummerSlam, and then uh, Bassett Bowling. But there was nothing, but between, uh, yeah, backlash, and money in the bank. Now there will be, right? Because it will take it'll take uh it'll happen on May twenty fourth. Uh, so th- this does this does finally make the year where m- there were more PLEs in other countries other than the U.S. Right. But don't you think it's a little odd that they wouldn't announce WrestleMania, considering, you know, a lot of people plan those trips, you know, like the week after WrestleMania. So, like, why either nothing they haven't decided yet, or why would they wait? What would they necessarily wait for? They're waiting for a PLE. You think that they're going to maybe announce a backlash? Uh, backlash. Uh, I. I hope to God not Saudi Arabia. Uh, <laughs> but I can imagine them saying, "Okay, we want." We want to do WrestleMania London, you know, uh, or we want to do WrestleMania uh, Paris. They're not going to do WrestleMania Paris, but they will do WrestleMania London just to say that they all drew rest, uh, um, all out or all in. One of those. Yeah, they're waiting for something 
Um, I mean, unless they announce it at Money in the Bank and it turns out to be uh, in Canada. Uh, like, I've always said that uh, you know, Vancouver could host a WrestleMania if given the chance. Uh, what are the uh, Central Canadian provinces, which would be no, they 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 would they wouldn't do uh, uh, they they wouldn't do Montreal again. Uh, and they're only probably talking about um. Uh, Las Vegas and uh, Minneapolis. Those were the two front runners. Well, uh, well considering, I I really think the WWE has uh, soured on the idea of doing it in. Las Vegas, and now uh, Las Vegas will only get Raw and SmackDown uh, and not anything else. Uh, maybe an NXT uh, event. Well, um, we are being joined by uh, Caligo Yachts. Um, like I, uh, I said uh, a moment ago, uh, we'll get into all things WrestleMania in a couple minutes. Um, but the one thing that was missing at WrestleMania was the amount announcement of where WrestleMania 41 is. Um, as you already know, um, Las Vegas and Minneapolis are the front runners. Um, what are your thoughts on why it wasn't announced, uh, Coleco? Yeah, that's probably the most awkward thing. Because usually they have the package ready. Right. So this tells me, but uh, it's been, I don't know if it's because of the merger, whatever the case may be, but they've been slacking on all of that. Because think about this, usually the Survivor Series this year would have already been told last year. Same with the Rumble. Um. A lot of this stuff is kind of being kept to the vest. And I'm thinking it's because they're trying to figure out where Mania is going to be. Uh, depending on the schedule or how they map it. Um, my hope is Las Vegas. Because Vegas seem, is more in the realm of New Orleans. In the sense where it's comfortable for everybody to walk. But I also think that they don't. They are high on having it at the U.S. Bank Stadium. I think it's called U.S. Bank Stadium where the Vikings play. So they are high on that. And it seems like it's more than likely going to be Minnesota. It's just a matter of how they're going to get there. Oh, you hear that in the background. Yeah, yeah. Back feet back. In fact, she's back. But so I'm thinking everything is telling me Minnesota. Is it, I, it, it, it's like they came in and swooped in at the night. So unless they're coming up with a package of the numbers, and the only way it would be Vegas because TKO headquarters is in Vegas. That seems like more of a no-brainer than anything. Uh, well, so. when uh, Endeavor themselves have been bought, only shares, not the whole company, right? Uh, but a, a majority to that at least allows TKO to function as a uh, separate company. Uh, WrestleMania 41, if we're still st sticking to the theme of central territory, uh, it, it could be Winnipeg, Regina, or Regina. Calgary. 
That, well, that's how they pronounce it. It's not Regina, Saskatchewan. Yeah, yeah can uh, I do it in WrestleMania in your vagina? I don't know. I'd be, I'd be stoked to see that. <laughs> quite honestly, uh, but Calgary, and if why not? You know what? You know Vancouver, but. This again. This is why they're waiting for a, a, one of the uh, international PLEs to say something. Well, the thing is, I think all the other PLEs are going to be international. I I think because Money in the Bank, if I'm not mistaken, is in Toronto, so I don't see them getting a mania right after Money in the Bank, or I don't see Canada getting a Money in the Bank. Uh, yeah, then, getting, a re- getting a WrestleMania. Yeah, getting a WrestleMania, it's going to be. Because it's. E- I think it's one of those things where it's easier to get people to come here than to get people to go over there. Okay. Uh, when it comes to WrestleMania, that is. I mean, if it were going to be anywhere, I would say UK. I think they're probably in the mix. I just got uh, Thought of something. Um, I think Las Vegas will be the front runner to rest, the host WrestleMania 41. And here's why we are more or, more or less locked in for um, Cody Rhodes versus The Rock. And, you know, The Rock doesn't wrestle unless it's WrestleMania. Um, that's pretty much confirmed as well. Um, The Rock is not getting on no flight and driving, um, flying his ass to no, uh, Minnesota to wrestle Cody Rhodes. He's, he'll fly to Las Vegas, especially considering that's where The Rock and Cody's story started. That me that kind of makes the most logical sense for their story to end where it kind of began in Las Vegas. That's and, a good point. Uh, and, especially, yeah. especially considering who debuted on SmackDown last night. And the second, and again, I think if, if The Rock wasn't a factor, 100% Minneapolis. Yeah, it would have been 41. But because, you know, they want to put that, oh, they want to bring The Rock, you know, and The Rock doesn't want to go to Minnesota, um, he'll, but he'll go to Las Vegas. It's a big uh, city, a big venue. It, 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 it would not surprise me if The Rock did not want to go to a Minnesota WrestleMania. It's not big enough for The Rock, if we're being honest here. Well, I thought it would have been Vegas because why else would they pick Vegas of all places for a press conference in the middle of the week? That's what threw me off. Granted, I do know the Super Bowl was there, but that's where I thought they were going to plan it because I thought it was like, oh, they're having a press conference there, so they're going to announce that it's going to be there uh, next year. But because we already know Nashville is guaranteed one in about two years. Um. So it's going to be interesting these next two picks because Tennessee is on the horizon to get one once I'm, that stadium's built. I'm calling it. Mm-hmm. WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas. WrestleMania 43 will be in Minneapolis. This is what I think. Nah, it won't. 43 is going to be in Nashville. So it would be a flip-flop. It's either going to be Minneapolis, Vegas, then Nashville, or Vegas, Minneapolis, Nashville. It's going to be hmm. Minneapolis and Vegas are going to flip-flop. Um, so one of those two are going to get it. When I have arena in succession. To, when is that arena supposed to be made in Nashville? Uh, 2027. It, 2027. Okay, so... Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I come across a list uh, just uh, 
uh, you know, this is just a, a, uh, this isn't a legal list, it's a hopeful list. Uh, they would put 41 in Nissan Stadium in Nashville. Uh, mm, not with the new stadium getting built, so. Right. And you, That's the only thing, because they're gonna wait till that stadium. That is, that is very uh, true, especially if as soon as it's completed, whatever Super Bowl is closest to it is gonna take right. place there. Uh, but yeah, uh, this you know fantasy you know location booking from forty one to fifty. 41, Nissan Stadium in Nashville. 42, Wembley Stadium in London, which would be funny. 43, Elysian Stadium in Las Vegas. Uh, 40, 44, uh, back to Atlanta and Mercedes-Benz Stadium. 45, the, uh, the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Uh Part of me was wondering if maybe Miami would be 41. Um, maybe Miami, but, but, Nah, Florida's had like four in like the last six years. Well, two of them were... Uh, COVID, but yeah. remember 28 was Miami. Yeah, that's true. Thirty-three was Orlando. Um, Thirty-three was Orlando. Twenty-four, twenty-eight. Was, um, Twenty-four, twenty-eight. Twenty-four. Thirty-three, thirty-seven. Yeah, you can't really count and, twenty. Uh, you can't really count thirty-six. All things considering. True. Um, they. Ooh, pr- for WrestleMania forty-six. Soldier Field in Chicago? Ooh. New one. It would have to be new one. Because they're tearing down Soldier Field. And they're building, I want to say they're building an indoor stadium at uh, Soldier Field. Uh, so the old, you- the Soldier Field that you're thinking of is no longer going to be there. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, 47 yeah, uh, in a that place thing. I'm... I'm surprised they really haven't decided uh, to go uh, back to, and I'm wondering if it may have to do with grievances with a, you know, a former employee. They are predicting for WrestleMania 47 at Lumen Field in, in Seattle. Uh, uh, 48, uh, mm-hmm. Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. For, 49, Rogers Center, Toronto. 50, and Meth, 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 Meth Life Stadium. I mean, that makes sense. Meth Life, <laughs> trying to get out of that thing at night. It felt like you would take Meth, get out. So trust me. It's, it's... Well, there's definitely a lot to, um... You know, but uh, uh, Minia- uh, Minneapolis has put in an official bid oh, for yeah. Mania. That we know. I don't believe uh, the, uh, Las Vegas's uh, bid is uh, I mean, up, uh, up there. There's there's also something else. I want you to consider just cause what if this is the last Wrestlemania ever <laughs> the reason why they didn't announce it is cause there, w- there won't be a Wrestlemania anymore no get the hell out of here they, 40 years of making this stuff uh... The Super Bowl of wrestling, and then they're just going to abandon it. No. That's the Super Bowl. They don't want to be the Super Bowl. 
the Olympics. Well, we saw we could make all the predictions we want, but you know, WWE has obviously the last call when it comes to all, all of this shit. So, um, we shall see what happens. I think that's a good place to um, conclude the news for now. And now, a quick word from all sponsors. So, Rogue Energy, the only gaming grid company in the world with four unique product lines to suit your task at hand, whether it be juices, shakes, smoothies, and everything else in between. Their low-calorie, no-sugar energy formula is the perfect alternative to sugar-filled canned energy drinks and sodas. Their extreme formula provides the most energy, focus, and sports performance possible. Their hydration line offers focus, ingredients without the added caffeine. Drink it anytime you're thirsty. And their shake formula is so delicious. Who doesn't love a cookies and cream, zero-calorie energy milkshake? First and foremost, they've designed every Rogue product line with performance and effectiveness in mind. It is critical that you look at the nutrition panels of drinks when comparing options. There are countless off-brands out there that are presenting low-quality, poorly-dosed formulas that amount to expensive caffeine water. Every formula they produce is designed with optimal levels of high-quality ingredients. Additionally, you won't find a powdered gaming drink brand that dissolves better. No need to have chalky textures in your drink. Their taste profiles are unmatched, specifically designed for gamers, athletes, students, entrepreneurs, people with hectic schedules, individuals with low energy, podcasters who can't shut up, people who are health conscious, and so much more. Great as both a pre-workout and as a coffee energy drink replacement. Specifically designed every Rogue product line to be the best gaming drink on the planet. Rogue energy, more energy, more focus, more wins. Use promo code WRESTLINGE for 10% off your next purchase. And we are wrestling with... WWE WrestleMania Extra Large. Um, we'll, we'll just talk about night one um, for the time being. Um, it took place in the Lincoln Financial Center. Uh, who knew Lincoln could be your factory? Right. Uh, and it's interesting that... Lincoln Financial Field. Field. Lincoln, yeah. A.K.A. Philly. They don't call it that. They call it the link. Yep. Yeah, they call it the link. It's it look interesting... Like link, but, you know. It's interesting how uh, the, the, the past week there has been almost nothing but rain uh, up until uh, Friday. I mean, there was an earthquake uh, right leading up to WrestleMania as well. So, yeah, in New it, York. Yeah, but yeah. but they, I'm saying that somehow the uh, they got a the rain. Yeah, like Tampa. It, it was or New York City when it was like raining like hell after WrestleMania. I don't know. God must have a thing for WrestleMania. <laughs> I, I, that's the only thing. Because I, you, you are right. I've been to the last what three on the East Coast. I don't know. I swear to God, Tampa was the the freakiest. It was like a big bucket of water just waiting to pop out on the middle of the ring on the ring. And it never came off. And it rained during WrestleMania, and then it went away, and it was good. And never rained after, literally after the fireworks. I don't know how to get away, but carry on, James. Yeah. God loves WrestleMania. <laughs> I, I, either that or WrestleMania is like God's uh, pee break. The... <laughs> One or the other. Night one attendance for seventy two thousand five hundred and forty three, um, respectable number. Um, so, um, you know the show as a whole. Um, I kind of thought that it was maybe, honestly, on the weaker side, considering what we would see on night two. Um, 
but what say you, Scooter? What was your thoughts on night one as a whole? I'm actually in full agreement with you. Um, considering how everything everything went down well, but for some reason things were not hitting, you know, not hitting the the marks <laughs> to you know, turn a phrase. Just something, something felt off. I agree. What, um, what say you, Coleco? Night two, um, I mean, night one, you were there, you were probably freezing. Yeah, it was like 40 degrees. I'm like, fuck this. Uh, but, (laughs) (laughs) but, but, uh, yeah, it was honestly, I think. Fan wise, you could tell people were just hyped for it. Um, I think everyone was more into, and they're learning now because people used to blow it all in night one. We're we're kind of getting to this thing where they're finally realizing it's a marathon and not a sprint because <laughs> the last couple of years everybody's been going hard on night one, like yeah, 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 and by night two they're dead. Dead. So it made sense for night one to be as epic, and and it, it was going to happen at some point. Most people came for night two, anyways. Uh, but night one was okay. A couple matches I wish could have went longer. Um, but all that being said, it was still a good night, just not that night like we had. Last year, I think the last year's night one was the best night one ever. Um, it, it didn't live up to that billing, but it lived to a good billing. But it was the night with Taylor Swift's boyfriend's brother. <laughs> no one gave two shits. Uh, they were more happy that Meek Mill was playing in the stadium. Because he's been taking L's with this Diddy shit. We'll, we'll get into, you know, night two in a bit, but there was there was no surprises or, you know, cameos or guest spots in night one. It was kind of just cut and dry pro wrestling, if I'm being honest. All right. Um, um, that's what it was meant to be. It was, I think, night one theme, if I could put it into a... A term is against all odds, because uh, Rhea won against all odds. Because people really thought Becky was going to win, but we'll go there down the line as we go match by match. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. Um, Rhea Ripley defeated Becky Lynch uh, to open the night for the women's world champ to retain her women's world championship in 17 minutes and five seconds. Um, if I'm being honest, this was probably the best match on the card. Um, they absolutely, you know. Really? Yeah, they tore the house down. There was a lot of physicality. There was a lot of good um, storytelling all around. Um, you know, good shit in my opinion. Um, what say you, Coleco? Because <laughs> you seem to disagree. No, no, no. I'm not saying that it was a bad match, but match of the night, man, or best, or okay, I mean, best match on night one or best match of night. No, best match of night one. Okay, I agree. There you go. That's <laughs> what I was. Okay, I agree. Best match of night one. There we go. We're getting there. All right, best match. Yeah, yeah. This set the tone. It was good to see. Because a lot of the girls were, were I mean, they wanted to pine for the main event, right? So if you can't get the main event, you want to be the first motherfucker on the card, as Scooter would say. And when they got that opportunity, they tore the house down. Personally, I thought Becky would have won. I really thought she was going to win, considering the books, the book out and all the tour. 
they didn't know she was dealing with being week of. So considering that she was sick the week of and come out and pop that out, that's really good. Um, but Rhea retains, and then then you see the methodology of retain get there. But as far as this match, it did what it's supposed to do, and Rhea. At first, when I thought about it, I was like, damn, she won. She basically ran the roster. And then Monday happened. Another <laughs> thing. <laughs> she hasn't ran uh, Love Morgan yet. So, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bro, that chair throw was something else. That oh, chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was all sight. That was all sight, but that's all the topic. What's say you, Scooter? You know, no, yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't think this was the best match of the night. I don't think there were any best matches of the night. Um. Really. Um, okay, Rhea Ripley winning is great, but at no point did I expect Becky to actually win. The the fact that they split up the tag team titles again with without any was the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That was the 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 best moment of WrestleMania Night One. Learning the tag titles yeah. are separate. Finally. Oh, I knew they were going to be separate. The way they hung them, it was going to be separate. Because every every ladder match it, for those titles, they always had them together. What? The titles. It would always be four on one rung. When they did two on two different rungs, I'm like, finally, they're fucking splitting this bitch. <laughs> let's uh, get back, back to uh, Becky and Mia, uh, Scooter. But let's get back to the path. <laughs> back to the path of Scooter not having the, the yeah. no match of the night. Uh, the six-pack ladder match was not memorable aside from somehow Austin Theory and uh, uh, Littler Iggy Azalea winning the tag SmackDown tag but, titles. We're talking about Rhea and Becky, you know. I, I was, I was done with Rhea and Becky. Yeah, he's done with it's, Becky. That's... How many scores do you give Rhea and Becky? I will, I will give them, uh, I will give them three and a half. Kaliko? A good four. I mean, I, the reason I thought Becky was going to win because she got it's a cult following and. The Hulk up. I just thought it was going to happen, but it didn't. And Mommy's still on top. So, four. It was a good start. Great start. I agree. I give it four as well. All right. Uh, Becky and... lost just so she just so she could go on that book tour. Uh... I know. She's supposed to be coming to L.A. I got to fucking do what day she's going to play. Tickets are like all bullshit. Other stuff. I... What the fuck they got to do with it? <laughs> well, I mean, I've been looking for tickets, and I, and I can't find them, so. Oh, anyway. Uh, oh, that's tomorrow. Oh, that's today at the Grove. Oh, yeah. let's see. Barnes and Noble. Then, right, um, $31. I mean, go on. I'm just, don't mind me. We got the six, uh, the six pack tag team rattle match for the undisputed WWE tag team championship. Both set of titles have to be retrieved for the match to end. We got A Town down under Austin Theory and Grayson Waller and the Austin Truth, the Miz and Art Truth, defeating the Judgment Day Finn Balor, Damian Priest, Johnny Gargano, um, Tommaso Ciampa, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods. Pete Dunn, Tyler Bates, um, um, still kind of already said what you felt about the match. Uh, I, I will say one more thing. 
that okay, I do I do have two highlights from this match. One is R Truth making the hot tag and R Truth counting yes. the pin. Yep. Yes. Yes. And and then what happened on Monday night? Oh yeah. He out outshined even that. So. Um, you know, I do agree with Scooter, um, uh, that this was maybe not the most memorable ladder match. Um, you know, it kind of, it was what it was, but, um, based on, you know, ladder matches in the past. Um, you know, the all, the, the most memorable moments had nothing to do with an actual ladder, like, you know, the R2 segments. Um... That being said, I think the right people, everybody in the match, that won was the right people to actually win. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Um, Kalika? Um, I personally thought that the best moment, that was the best, I mean, I I didn't even know our truth never won at Mania. I was like, holy shit, he's been there since damn near twenty years and never won one. I was like, Zack Ryder never won one. And then when you hear the story of how he almost died and came back just to get this moment, I mean, it it's everything. It puts so much emphasis on how much more it meant. Um, but the best moment was splitting those goddamn titles. I was like, for fuck's sakes, they finally pulled it off. Um, so now... So now that the tag titles can actually have separate tag divisions in their respective brands. And it gives Judgment Day a reason to kind of want to uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Get rematch clauses for both. So it kind of keeps them on both shows either way, in a sense. Right. Mm. A hot take here. I don't think the Tag Team Championship should have been split up. I think. Really? That, yeah, and this is kind of where I stand in it. Raw and SmackDown doesn't have enough tag teams to have two tag team championships. You know, having one tag team that goes from Raw to SmackDown, Raw and SmackDown, you know, it lets things breathe a little bit more. If, you know, if they're doing stuff on Raw, um, you know, it lets what they're doing on SmackDown kind of go a little bit longer. Um, because then you just have, you know, the New Day versus the Usos literally the same two tag teams going for the tag team titles for like a year and a half, like we saw in 2017, so. Well, well, the problem, but with that, you got the profit, I mean, profits to my, uh, DIY, Ms. True, Awesome Truth, Judgment Day, uh, AOP. I mean, you got teams, but you know, there's only it's just it's four tag teams on on one brand. You know, there's only so many stories you could tell. You know, interchanging those three before you have to do something unique or different with it. Just my well. Let's say this if. Hypothetical, sidebar hypothetical here. If it wasn't, if they both, if it was for all the tag titles, who was winning that match? All two in the match. I would have picked Waller in theory. Mm. See, that's because Waller in theory is the group that everyone's going to feel like they can beat and they're going to wiggle their way out of every match. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. That's why, that is why it it made sense for them to get a title, go to SmackDown, and try to solidify themselves as a serious tag team. Yeah. 
That should have been uh, pretty deadly, man. <laughs> pretty deadly would have been. See, pretty deadly. See, yeah. you got tagged. Oh, and that's not even thinking like Breaker Corbin if they come up. But keep Breaker on NXT. Oh no! Uh, well, no, on NXT. Oh, no. Well, see, unfortunately, we can't. Um, and him and him succeeding as a team with Baron Corbin uh, might just mean uh, Corbin comes along with him. God no! Um, how many stars you give this one, Scooter? I will I will give this one uh, four out of the sheer entertainment value uh, that we got out of this, plus the additional uh, uh, laughter and gener- uh, that uh, we got from this on Monday night when our truth. Still thought he was a part of the Judgment Day. For some that reason. was the funniest thing ever. I mean, oh, a, our partner's a guy you can't see. How they didn't figure that out. <laughs> the crowd already popped. The crowd knew. It made perfect The sense. crowd knew. Oh, well, man. Uh, I um, the match itself was a four. Our truth is a ten. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the first time I'm gonna give an individual star for the match. Our truth is a ten. He's not a ten. He's, he's the match itself was a four, but he's a ten. I'm just letting you know right now. His role is was a ten. And you know what, I'll agree with that. Our truth is definitely a 10. Um, but I'm personally going to give this match a 3.5. Um, it was a 3 star match, if I'm being honest, but all the shit that, you know, our truth actually did made it, um, you know, 3.5. And, and obviously the right people won as well. So, yeah. Alright, um... Now we have uh, a tag team match. We have Rey Mysterio versus uh, Andrade Del Idaho with Carlito, um, Cruz Del Torito, uh, Jacqueline Wild, and Selena Vegas. Um, they defeated uh, Santo Escobar, Dirty Dominic Mysterio, um, Angel. Borto and Electra, uh, Carmen Electra, and 11 minutes and 5 seconds. Carmen Electra? Yeah. I find I'm it surprised. funny that, surprised. that the only name you actually got right, or chose to get right there, was Dominic. <laughs> well, well, he was right. Um, if I'm being completely honest, if there was ever a toilet break match on this night, it would definitely be this match. Um, it was as cold as an ice cube, if I'm being completely honest. And I literally did not care who won, who lost, what was going on in this match. But that's just kind of me personally. Um, what say you, Kaliko? I mean, it, yeah, I mean... And I guess uh, you could only get one death row Dom entrance every five years because they didn't give him the death row entrance this year. Uh, But uh, that's what I knew he was taking. I mean, he was taking the L either way. But yeah, I get what they were trying to do. I mean, he took the L when he took the the Dom um, entrance. But at least he had the best entrance of the night. See, he won with the entrance, <laughs> even though he lost the match. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit. <laughs> he got nothing out of this. That's my point. He got nothing out of this. Uh, the the usual cats came, the Kelsey and Lane Johnson. 
the the Philly boys. I guess Kelsey's retired, had nothing to do. Um, I don't know where these guys go from here, but they go I, to, the place to me, hello, it's me. I'm the problem. I I personally thought that I'm just trying to figure out what they're going to do with um, Santos Escobar. Because um, uh, he, him losing, and I get Idolo winning. I get, I get it all. The the consensus was that Carlito was going to turn. At least that's what everyone kind of gave the vibe of in the match. And that didn't happen, so it was like, okay, well, whatever. Um, but Escobar... Well, because you, you saw... Well, if you remember Friday, they had the whole thing where Dragon Lee got attacked and he had to take Salida to the ring and he kind of was like ignoring Carlito a little bit type shit. Did you see the uh, reaction on Carlito's face? Uh, right. When uh, he, when Ray says he he has someone, because right. uh, well, because he knows it's not him. Him. But I mean, it was like anybody is anybody like, oh, we need Carlito as a heel at this point. No, but the point. The thing what I was thinking was, is this the end of their story, or is it going to go further? I think Carlito will end up turning. Santos is uh, last night on SmackDown, and believe me, this is not the biggest news coming out of last night SmackDown. Uh, there, there's a de- there's a debut there that we have to talk about, but. Santos was involved in a uh, series of triple threat matches last night where the winners uh, will meet, uh, meet next week to determine uh, who's Cody's uh, first title defense is against. Um, now... We do have we do have the draft coming up, uh, when, but it's but yeah uh, now backlash will be over, uh, but it's the time the draft happens. So it, they'll yeah they'll get it in just in time for for Cody to have at least one uh, defense uh, under this SmackDown brand. It's, it's, no, yeah. The, uh, the debut that you mentioned, is this at the beginning of SmackDown or the end of SmackDown? The end. Okay, so I got a little bit of ways to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and trust me, it's someone we've been speculating on for quite some time. Yeah. Uh, uh, but. Uh, yeah, so Santos was part of a triple threat uh, with uh, Bobby Lashley and L.A. Knight. Uh, L.A. Uh, L.A. Knight is winning. So he's still he's still somewhere up there in terms of push. Just don't exactly know where after last night, specifically. How many stars do you give this one, Scoodle? This... I will say this, it was the best 11 minutes and 5 seconds of sleep I ever had. Uh, I will... Damn! I, I, uh... Holy shit! This which, guy. which, it, which it, it, it's funny considering they actually had two back-to-back matches with the same times. Yes. Um. 
I'll give it two and a half. Coleco? It's it's in that range, two and a half, because nobody really, the crowd really wasn't it. They didn't pop into it until they realized Lane Johnson and the Kelsey kid was there. All right, so um, I have to kind of break this down um, for a minute. Um, for the simple fact that Andrade's um, Andrade's tag team partner was not Ric Flair, that makes this a five star match. Um, <laughs> now you have uh, oh my god now that you have you know the variables of um you know there was a lot of outside interference a lot of people that maybe sort of been on wrestlemania like you know uh the nwo and uh uh de la cruz new mexico people or uh, whatever their name is their faction name is what? Uh, Legado we, del Fantasma? We, we, we apo- Jesus Christ. We, we, oh. we apologize to our Hispanic listeners out there. I apologize. I to know. Them. It's. Um, that don't makes, let them get all the bread. That's all. That, that's, <laughs> they can't wait to see your. Uh, uh, no, I'm not going to say that because even I know when to shut up sometimes. <laughs> Well, the, all their involvement, that cuts it down to a four-star match. Then you have the fact that the wrong team won. That cuts it down another half a star. That brought three and a half at this point. Uh, and then you have the involvement of that Philadelphia uh, Eagles super, um, football player. Uh, that cuts it down another half a star. And then J- Taylor- Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. Yeah, and then Taylor Swift's uh, brother-in-law, that cuts it down another half a star. Two and a half stars. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you may be yeah. justified why we all gave it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Travis and Taylor are not met, are not married, so... He's married, sir. Uh, he's uh, technically of no relation. Well... Yeah, the that ha- fact that they had to mention that he was related, somehow related to Taylor Swift, was hilarious. Uh, yeah, Taylor, Ta- Taylor Swift. Now that Taylor was a reach. Taylor. Now that I will give you that because not, I mean, Pat McAfee cleaned it up because he said legendary Hall of Famer Philadelphia <laughs> Center. I mean. She, thank you, Pat McAfee, for making that say. Once I heard the audio. Oh, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the other thing about this. Oh. Pat McAfee and uh, his uh, unbridled uh, uh, swearing. If the if the audience did it, he did it. Oh yeah. Let's get into the next match. Um, the other match that was 11 minutes and 5 seconds. Um, Jay Uso defeated Jimmy Uso in 11 minutes and 5 seconds. Um, the, the video package was a fucking banger. Um, that's definitely up there with like Austin Rock, if I'm being completely honest. Yes! Um, yes! So, the, no way. the match, it's... The match itself, it wasn't bad. It was good. I just wanted more. Like, this should have been maybe 17 minutes. And it wasn't. And the story the story aspect was there. It just didn't it just didn't hit all the way. It was it wasn't a full home run, if I'm being honest. Um and you know, I I made the the, um, the prediction that Jimmy was gonna win, and Jay obviously won, uh, which makes me kind of wonder what they're doing with Jimmy. But then again, um, SmackDown. You saw what happened last out. <laughs> so yeah. you know that question. Did last night happen? For too long. 
But uh, what did what did I what did I tell you over the past uh, couple of weeks that WWE doesn't really have faith in Jimmy as a singles competitor more than Jay. Right, but I mean, you have to give him something in order to try and put him on the level of Jim. Exactly. You know, he didn't have a year and a half with Roman to tell that story as the right-hand man. You know, he came in as nobody's bitch. So, you know, you have to kind of fast-track something that took Jay three years to actually achieve. You know what I mean? I'll say this. When Jimmy came in, the length of time that it took for him to go from nobody's bitch to Roman's sidekick was a lot shorter. It should have been at least that should have been at least a three to four month build in my eyes. Um, so I get that point. You say what? We never got Jimmy versus yeah. Roman. Jimmy versus Roman. No, we've gotten Jay versus Roman at least three times. Right. And that was bu- – and two of them was before SummerSlam last year. Yeah. So, um, was that your full thoughts on the, the match, uh, Scoodle? It was like I have this. I'm in the same uh, boat as you with it. I thought there was going to be more to this, but at the same time, it actually tells a uh, different story uh, uh, underneath what we see about Jimmy wanting to step out of his brother's shadow, but still thinks he can, that he can use Jay's moveset because he's his brother. It's it's underlying storytelling there, which I'm which I'm sad to say uh, may very well just go away, uh, and uh, and maybe even Jimmy gets outright released. Um, I mean, not this woman. This woman is there. Well, considering uh, what Triple H mentioned about Roman in the uh, post conference, uh, it's a, it could be, but I will um, I'll give I'll give this match three and a half. Coleco, I had so much potential for this match. This is going to be the match of the night. I thought it was going to be a stealer. Um, not an eagle. I, <laughs> not an eagle. <laughs> not an eagle. Let me. Uh, that's a whole other story about my brother. This time to say he's a cowboy fan in the middle of the monorail full of eagle fans. That's a whole other story. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I thought this store, this match was gonna be a banger because I thought they were just gonna let him go. And it seemed like they let him go, but in in the story was there. I just think it would have been a lot longer. I think when Jimmy did the whole "I'm sorry" bit, I thought that should have been the end. What? Um, uh, um, but Jay got the win, and we were like, "Why would he get the win?" Last night told us why he got the win. So that and. And honestly, that when you think about it, and and this is where I got to give them credit. This is just showing you the storytelling because maybe 
this is why Jimmy had, was supposed to lose all these times and fail because when you think about it, every time he was failing or fucking up, who was always like kind of pissed and getting more and more pissed? It was Solo. Like you could see the frustration on Solo's face, right? Because I mean, Solo beat John Cena clean in uh, Saudi Arabia, and he he essentially took the tribal chief. He's the tribal chief in training, essentially. Right, but my thing was Jimmy was the guy who was. The brag- he's braggadocious than the bell rings. And it's like they get, and like Roman was saying, opportunity after opportunity after opportunity, and they mess up. And Solo would take the blame, and it just happened. So now it makes sense why he lost. But that being said, I, I <laughs> this was the match I was looking forward to. Three and a half is, is, is right around there, but I thought they could have gave it a solid four if they gave him time to actually get like a lot more physical than they should, right? And and just let him go because I think the the Gunther match was longer than this match, and the Gunther match really had no story to it, right? And obviously, we'll get there when we get there. Um, yes. But, no, you're absolutely right. But the one thing I disagree with you on, uh, it could have been a a four-star match. This could have been a five-star match, if I'm being completely honest. Um, It could have been. You know, if they they let it breathe, and it could have, and, you know, we've seen Jay have matches where he lets it breathe. Um, it's obviously, you know, it's never not going to be a story between these two because obviously, you know, they're brothers. But, you know, for it being their first encounter with each other, it definitely wasn't what I wanted it to be. It was still good, though. Um, so, three and a half. All right. Um, then we have, uh, we got uh, Jay Gargle. Uh, Bianca Belair and Naomi versus uh, D- Dakota Kai, and on that uh, and on that form she had a well, no, there's no ER. Um, okay, um, Kairi Sane and um, Asuka. Dakota Kai, Kairi Sane, and Asuka. Um, they lost to Jay Cargill, Bianca Belair, and Naomi in eight minutes and five seconds. I'm sensing a theme with the fives here. <laughs> um, it was what it needed to be. If I'm being completely honest, it it got Bianca on the card. It got Jay to win. Um, and we all needed to see um, you know, Kyrie Sane and Oscar dance to Bianca's music. Um, so yeah, and it wasn't too long. So all in all, this hit all the right beats in all the right. In all the right ways, in my opinion. Um, Scudo. Um, I can't remember if it was last week or two weeks ago where I said, you know, something, there should be something to get the rest of damage control on the card. And uh, this... This was perfect, uh, considering that nobody knew who Bianca and uh, Naomi would have as their partner. Could have been Hulk Hogan, for all we know. Uh, (laughs) uh, Yes, damage control losing does kind of set a precedent for night two. Uh, I know there are some people that will say that this was a uh, a waste of uh, uh, Oscar's talent, of Bianca's talent, of Naomi's talent. Uh, but this this was the 
one right way to introduce uh, somebody in a in their first uh, match under legitimate WWE rules. Uh, you know, as uh, yeah, Kalika said, uh, it gets Bianca on the card. Or is that... I said that. Uh, oh, that, damn it! See, my 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 brain is going. Uh, I I I already forgot your name, James. Uh... <laughs> damn. damn. <laughs> damn. <laughs> Uh, okay, Jameson Jenna. Uh, I mean, the right amount of time, the right. This really kind of reminded me of when WrestleMania. Uh, you know, between the first match and the main event, were filled with filler matches. Yeah. Yeah. WrestleMania six, for example, comes to mind with that, but it was quick. It was to the point. Oscar essentially. Still playing the uh, third wheel in this is something. I'll... Still hasn't won at Mania as well. Uh, so that's that's the only real negative uh, of this match. Uh, so I I I will give this match. I'll give I'll give it a four. Well, I mean, the Cowboy Carter's got the win. Uh, Dakota Kai, snack of the night, man. Uh, uh, it, I agree with everybody else. It did what it was supposed to do. Um, Cargill got over without having to put too much effort into it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I, I would give it a three. Uh, the right people won. I just feel bad for Asuka still hasn't gotten a WrestleMania win. Yeah, that was definitely one negative. Um, I'll say the Clico, uh, three stars. Um, but I will say the match between Jade and Chelsea Green was five stars on Raw. <laughs> 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 Chelsea definitely got robbed of a WrestleMania moment because she kind of deserves it. Hey, just let her, let her get pancaked over and over again. I'll happily mm-hmm. watch that. Um, now we have um, um, the Intercontinental Championship match. Uh, Sami Zayn defeated Gunther in uh, 15 minutes and 30 seconds. Um... Really hard, honestly, to get invested in the match considering this wasn't Sammy's story to tell. You know, if it was the exact same match but had Chad Gable in it, um, it would arguably be a four to five star match. Um, but considering, you know, the wrong people were in the match and you could argue argue the fact that the wrong person won. Um it just didn't hit the way it could have. Um Kalika? I mean Yep. I mean Sammy winning is not I mean Ultimate Underdog, they use Gable as a person to help him train. Honestly it was Rocky in a nutshell. Right. It was it was Rocky three in a nutshell. That that whole match was Rocky three. I mean, um, ten, I mean, technically, couldn't you call it Rocky four, considering that 
Well, well, uh, Gunther might not be Russian. <laughs> He's Austrian, which uh, is almost as bad. Uh, Damn. <laughs> But I mean, considering that that match was nuts, and and saying he was able to hit Brainbuster off the turnbuckle, it was fucking nuts. Excuse me. So I gotta gotta give it to him. It was about a I say what a, I give it a four. It was a four for the story. Uh. I think this is really uh, one of the first instances in uh, of us seeing as fans uh, if Gunther is willing to work to put his opponents over as much as they've done for him. And I saw plenty. I saw plenty of that throughout this match. Uh, I do have to admit that in that it took uh, two haluva kicks with the body with Gunther's body uh, facing in a different direction, both times you know first one was to the side of the head the second one was to the back of the neck uh so that 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 difference it's subtle uh but it's it it's it's kind of genius storytelling that being said he's gunther and he shouldn't have really f- fell so easy to two haluva kicks, especially with that crawling one arm cover. Uh, it's it, it really does take away the mystique. So it, a good a good portion, a good majority of. Uh, Gunther's mystique as you know, an, uh, an unbeatable force. Um, I I presume that uh, Imperium after this match, Imperium or at least Gunther moves to SmackDown uh, and we get a uh, a Cody Gunther uh, feud until the uh, uh, until until God, maybe Maybe until SummerSlam or the Bash of Berlin, because um, that's that's kind of the natural direction. Right. I see. Um, I honestly, part honestly, part of me didn't think that uh, Sammy was gonna win it. Uh, Especially considering that he's won it before at Mania. Right. I don't think they remember that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. N- n- nobody remembers it. Because he won it from somebody who doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yep. How many stars you got? Uh, I will. I will give it a straight four. Uh, yeah. uh, 3.5 for the uh, consistently g- good wrestling and a another half a star for storytelling through 
that act, that actual wrestling. I think it's three matches, uh, three matches, uh, three stars. Um, one, one people in the one match, um, it made me, um, kind of, um, fall out of it, if I'm being honest. Alright, uh, and then we have, um, The Rock and Roman Reigns defeating, um, Cody Rhodes and Seth Christian Rollins. Uh, making Cody and Roman's match at WrestleMania Night 2 uh, a Bloodline Wars match. Um, it kind of did what it needed to do. It told the story that they wanted to tell. Um, you know, Rock didn't necessarily do anything spectacular in the match. Kind of did what he needed to do rather than, you know, jump out of the skin. Um, it had kind of a clusterfuckery feel to it, but not in a bad way, I would say. Um, not, 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 didn't necessarily hate it, but didn't necessarily, I would, I would lean more on the favorable side, just considering that it told the story, um, you know, properly in the right way, and it did kind of make sense leading into night two. Um, you know, I've been pretty critical that The Rock did not need to be in this situation at all. Um, but, you know, that's another story for another time. Um, what say you, Coleco? Say what you will, that crowd ate that shit up. <laughs> oh, I have no doubt. That, that, crowd, that crowd ate that shit up. By the last time he was in the ring. It was for two minutes, but they're growing. So shit. Six seconds. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Six seconds. So I mean, they took it all in. Uh, Rock actually pretty looked not that bad. Um, Especially after the getting story speared. was told. Yeah, yeah. After getting speared and all that, I think this was this was the beginning of the greatest storytelling night in WrestleMania. I think all of night two was really good. But this was just the beginning of the stories that were going to be done for night two. And it was a great way to start that part. Um, I felt like that one was like rivalries and then stories. And this match here started and it's Beautiful MVP for Seth Rollins that has never been. Coleco, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Oh no! <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. There we go. Like I said, it started the. I thought that this match started the the beautiful crescendo of the MVP known as Seth Rollins. Uh, all in all, I think it was a solid match. The crowd really, really in, in, hyped it up. Uh, they were depressed when Rock got to figure in the first place. You're breaking up again. Yeah. There we go. God damn it! Rock ain't putting the motherfuckers over. Like it's super staticky. I don't know why. I have no idea either. And, uh, okay, while we're, while we're waiting for Calico, uh, uh, Scuro? This main event, which, by the way, 
will go down in history as the second longest main event uh, in uh, W uh, in WrestleMania history. Only second to Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. Yes, and uh, and it pushed uh, Rock and Cena out of second place. Uh, I believe their WrestleMania 28 match was uh, the second longest main event before this. Uh, that that match being 30 minutes and five seconds. Um, this uh, this was it was great storytelling. It was. Oh, everything being told through either the the moves themselves or the facial expressions uh, being made. You know, it was it was really easy to follow. Um, I. I do like how they paid uh, they paid uh, homage to uh, the People's Elbow uh, finally winning a match uh, for the first time in um, over when Rock beat yeah. Punk. Yeah. And- Will not be pumped. Uh, so, uh, with that uh, being said, I, <laughs> I mean, Seth's in. Uh-oh. Did we lose anyone? No, I'm here. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, the entrances were good. Uh, I, I I don't think uh, as good as they would be at night two. Um, uh, but other than that, this was this was a great main event, and. We all kind of knew there was no way Cody and Seth were going to walk out of this one with a win. You said that Cody and Seth was going to win last week. Well, two weeks ago. Well, I mean, if you don't get bloodline rules, you don't get that uh, that uh, the most entertaining clusterfuckery of all time. Which I absolutely uh, called. <laughs> yeah, except uh, a, a, a very interesting audible uh, for for the uh, night two, and I'll get how uh, how it's quite the how it's quite the perfect audible when it comes down to it. But uh, th- this was. A, a great match. It, it checked all the boxes of what it need, needed to do and what could they have done to make it even better. I will give it a 4.5. Coleco, are you back? I know. They keep trying to kill me. I don't know what it is. I don't... <laughs> Everything Scooter said, ditto. The crowd was into it. Um, the right match. Uh, the right people won. And the good thing, like most of the other matches, you really couldn't tell who was going to win. I think that was, I think, the biggest key of it all. Um, you were really, really... You really thought Cody and them was going to win this match at the end. 
And once it was not meant to be, it just was like, oh. Uh, but it made them look stronger than ever. And it made Roman cockier than ever at that post, that press conference, boy. Oh, yeah. That post conference, woo, woo, woo. Cloud 12. How many stars? So, four and a half. Uh, four and a half. I, I'd say 4.8 for the story because it really felt like Cody was going to win it. It actually showed the ramifications. And I think the bigger part of it was the disappointment on Seth's face. Yeah. Sold it all. <laughs> because considering that he gave it his all and he was going to be and, – and it showed that he was the most damaged out of all of them, which was – crazier and then he saw his no the the facial part aspects got me because you could tell seth was like fuck and then it goes it dovetails in the night too he's the first person in the fight so it was like he really felt like he sacrificed himself for nothing and uh well there the yeah the when we get to night the main event of night two, all that can actually be explained through the actual match storytelling. Right. Now, um, I give it four, uh, I give the match four stars. Now, um, night one as a whole, not counting night two. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs in the middle, screw. Uh, thumbs up. Uh, I will say this. I mentioned there was a mystery segment slotted uh, for one of the nights. Uh, and that uh, that ended up going to Stephanie McMahon. Uh, but what I originally called for that was actually indicated on Raw for a cut for a like a frame or two. At certain points, things went glitchy, and the screen simply said, "Hello." Uh, this was indicating Uncle, uh, Uncle Howdy, uh, maybe even the fiend Bo Wyatt. Uh, it, uh, aside from that, thumbs definitely up. Coolico? Night one was a, a thumbs up, just because it's it was night one of Mania. I I think we're just so clamoring for WrestleMania. I felt like Philly was just on fire for it, so the crowd definitely made it a thumbs up in my book. Uh, and we uh, we forgot to look at the uh, the biggest match in in uh, you know in all of uh, you know WrestleMania Philadelphia history. Uh, Pats versus Genos. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Who got out cheese staked? <laughs> and, and were the was the crowd just too full of che- uh, cheesecake, cheese steak to uh, uh, cheesecake, cheese steak, all everything was consumed. Ah, uh, hell, hell yeah! Just hey, put a steak on my cheesecake. Or put some cheese on my steak cake, and we're good. <laughs> I give this one a uh, honestly. I'm gonna say thumbs in the middle. There was some good storytelling, without a doubt, but it just 
it just there was not it, it never really got more exciting. It just kind of was what it was. If I'm being honest, uh, like I said at the beginning, um, you know, it was just wrestling and not too much more. Um, it didn't hit the way it could. Have. All right. Um, hey, You're a hate uh, Oh, now we are wrestling with WrestleMania Night 2. I will say uh, Night 2 hit, did hit a hell of a lot harder than Night 1 did. Um, lots of great um, wrestling, everything. Mm. That, um, that, and- more of the fives and zeros in the time to- in the match times. Right, and it just like I said, it just kind of hit a little bit more. There was a little bit more excitement. There was a lot of surprises and celebrities we actually gave a shit about. Um, so you know that really you know they kept the tempo up for a long a longer time than like. Um, what say you, Scooter? What are your thoughts as a whole for night two? Uh, as a whole, I thought it was, I thought it was great. It was hilarious. It was, uh, uh, you know, and, and the people who deserved something coming to them got it. Uh, the fact that we had an Adam Rose reference, uh, at, at all to begin with, I'm surprised it wasn't a No Way Jose, uh, uh, reference, but, 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 the storytelling on this night is some of the best storytelling that WWE has ever done at a night two of WrestleMania, or in my opinion, at a WrestleMania regardless. This was the first time night two, I felt, was actually better than night one. The last two night one WrestleManias were, in my opinion, better than night two. Well, what say you, Kalika? What are your thoughts on night two of WrestleMania? Um, um, if night two was by itself, it's the greatest WrestleMania of all time. Hmm. Uh, well, even with night one, it's still the greatest WrestleMania of all time. I haven't felt a city be this optimistic about a post WrestleMania since 30. It really felt like 30. Like it, you, you know, like at 30, you kind of felt like it was a changing of the guard and you felt like it was going to usher in a new era, in a sense. And it did. But this actually feels like it happened, and it's going to be sustainable. And I'm... That was like magic in a bottle. That was wrestling crack. (laughs) Pure and simple. But also, this that night, was I think explained the reason why wrestling was so awesome and why we love it so much. And they actually borrowed New Japan's playbook. The callbacks on this night alone was epic. Well, let's get into it. Um we got Drew McIntyre defeating Seth freaking Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship in 10 minutes and 30 seconds. 
Um, what a hell of a way to start WrestleMania. Um, it hit all the right marks at all the right moments. Um, and it was exactly what it needed to be in the position that it was. And it was a high energy, um, very unpredictability of it. Um, you know, obviously afterwards, um, uh, Drew McIntyre got into CM Punk's face. Punk attacked him. Damien's, uh, Damien Priest uh, came out, capitalized, defeated Drew McIntyre by pinfall, cashing in his Money in the Bank briefcase to become the World Heavyweight Champion in nine seconds. Um, all great, great match, great storytelling, all around. Fantastic. Um, I love the callback in this match. I, I loved all the callbacks in this match. Uh, and when people are saying like, oh, well, what was the callback in the match? The callback was in the cash-in because you remember when Seth beat Drew and Damien tried to cash in, Drew stopped them. Drew sabotaged him, and and Drew did, and and Damien did not forget that receipt. And the one thing everyone kept thinking, it was weird because they were like, "Oh yeah, Roman's gonna win," or people kept thinking they were gonna cash in on Cody and Roman's winner. And I was like, "There's no way," because Damien has more history with Seth and Drew on the cash ins than anything. Especially with Drew having the the honor of sabotaging Damien's cash in. So payback was a bitch on that one. And all Drew and I think it was right the right moment. McIntyre got his moment in front of the crowd. And I think he got so starstruck on that that it got Icarus got too close to the sun. Oh, yeah. He should have just left. Motherfucker should have just left. But he wanted to put it in his face. And you know what? That is the Drew character. He, the promo that we saw, like I saw at the tailgate before all this, he actually got a good one. And he got it, and Punk costed him the match. Damien got the cash in. New champ. The tweet said it all. Bored at work. Fuck. <laughs> that, that said everything it needed to be said. That's what I do when I'm bored at work. <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, great match. And, and Seth... And this was the beginning of Seth being the MVP. I mean, Seth was the MVP last night, but this was really where it showed because had the main event, then had to come out night two as the headliner. So he didn't even get a full 24 hours to recover. Uh, and to still put on that match is astounding on his part. I mean... Also, can't uh, forget the entrance. Oh, yes, that entrance was fire. Oh, yeah. Both of them were, actually. You know, a relative of mine, if they saw Drew walking under the, the, the swords, the first thing they would say is, there's the bride. He's walking down the aisle with no bride. Um, and again, uh, Seth Rollins deciding on Adam Rose cosplay, basically. Pretty much. Yeah. Like, being... <laughs> In fact, I think Pat even almost called them, uh, called, uh, what's the one who said, 
don't be a, a lemon. <laughs> be a rosebud. Oh my god. Yeah, that's uh that was a long time ago. <laughs> Like I said, Callback City. Night two was Callback City, baby. Um, how many stars do you give um this match, Scooter? Given that it was still telling a story uh from night one and was able to almost seemingly uh, sequester itself into a different story while not looking, not losing focus on both made it probably one of the best openers in, uh, in, in Mania history. Uh, that being said, I do I think they could have given it four more minutes. Uh I prob I mean probably. Uh I mean the you know, the attempt to win it within uh Thirty seconds, like six seconds. It, it, yeah, right when he hit that claymore at the beginning, we thought it was over. <laughs> like, oh shit! Like, oh shit! So, I will give it a uh, give it a uh, four. I'll give it a four and a half. Coleco. Oh, gosh. Uh, my mind wants to say five because of the fact that the story that it carried, right? And, and, and Scooter hit a point. One man told two different stories. Yeah. And that is so hard to pull uh, in, in a match. And... And not only that, his story, it's crazy because Seth's story dovetailed into Drew, which dovetailed into Punk, which eventually is going to get back to Seth. You see what I'm saying? So the the possibility of that happening is still there. Uh, the possibility of Drew and Seth popping off is still there. Um, me personally, I would give this a five on the story itself. Uh, the simple fact that it it not only did Seth carry that match, he was emotional about the match. He lost the belt as a defending champion. He it almost felt like when he even though he was braggadocious going down the the the, the line, he knew he was dealing with borrowed time and. And for him to lose, give gave the man his props as a champion would. And the champion who is now there shot himself in the foot by doing the thing that Seth didn't do, which was overglow. Says everything you need to say. And Damien took advantage and the cash in. So, yeah, the story itself was a fine. But, but yet both WrestleMania cash-ins now revolve around Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Exactly. So you're giving this five stars? Five. The story was a five. Everything, and this is from Pillar of the Post, so the whole thing. Because it caught everybody off, off guard. I mean, I kind of saw Damian cashing in, uh, personally. But, uh, the fact that all of that happened because the fact that we thought CM Punk wasn't even going to be able to wrestle, which goes to show he's actually better than what we thought, which we thought it was going to be what, nine months. What? So now he's back in two and a half. 
the dreaded nine month injury. Yeah, you know it I very know. well, James. <laughs> well, I don't know it. I can't get it, so Well, I mean that's what you called it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I agree with Coleco. This this was the whole this as a whole was um five stars. One hundred percent. But now we have um we have a Philadelphia street fight with Bubba Ray Dudley as the special guest referee and Snoop Dogg as the special yeah, guest commentator. We have- now, somebody tell me how Snoop was on the commentary, because I know he was on that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder why. <laughs> why, why, is, why, does Snoop Dogg, why is Snoop Dogg being in Philadelphia even relevant to anything. Now, this is where I'm going to get in WWZ's ass for the one thing I hated about it. Every match that they had was sponsored by something stereotypical. They had the Mexican match sponsored by something that they related to Latin people. They had this match sponsored by gin and juice fucking gin and fucking juice. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? The Usos match was was sponsored by Depends, basically adult diapers. Which I mean, Rikishi, hello. I'm just saying, like y'all could get, <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on in this, this bitch? They need to fire the sponsorship person because that is clearly some bigoted ass shit. <laughs> I'm a uh, complete side note here, but how much you want to bet in the next maybe like five years, WrestleMania is actually going to be on. Um, broadcast TV with the amount of sponsors that they're bringing in and doing. I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be next year on Netflix. It's going to be on Netflix next year. No, Shit. it's still PLE. No. It's, still, it's still going to be yeah. the PLE. But, uh, really? Yeah. Back, back, to, back to the Philadelphia Street fight. We got the Pride and the Prejudice wrestling um, the final testament. Um, if, if I'm being honest, it wasn't a bad match. It kind of did what it needed to do. It had, you know, it had those surprise elements. Um, the, the ending was kind of like a wet fart, but, uh, other than that, um, it hit all the way buttons. Yeah, isn't it awesome? Scoot up. Uh, ooh. Uh, I mean, th- this was this was an interesting match. It was a history-making match, but it was by far the, the worst match on the card. And it's not that it's a bad match, it's just that there are so many better matches on this card in particular. Um, yes. Uh, literally the entire you know, uh, AOP carrying cross. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, <laughs> so th- thank you uh, mystery host number four. Uh, <laughs> I know, um, right? Uh, the AOP, uh, Karrion Cross, Scarlet, and believe it or not, Paul Ellering. This was their first WrestleMania appearance ever. Paul Ellery? Yeah, yep. Probably. Yeah, yep. Not, Get uh, the not fuck out of here. Yeah, not even at WrestleMania 8. Holy shit, I thought he would have been in one. Yep. Uh, so, it it should get respect for what it what it allowed Essentially, this was the old school fundamental uh, 
of earlier WrestleManias. And that, was, again, was one, filler matches so that everybody can get on the card. Right. Uh, so, uh, seeing uh, B-Fab and Scarlet actually, uh, you know, mix it up while not actually being part of the match was a welcome surprise. Uh, I don't think the match needed it. Uh, I mean, otherwise, you know, uh, Bubba would have put one of them through a table. Uh, but <laughs> the fact that yep. Bubba, uh, the part of Devon Dudley will be played by uh, the the pride uh, and they did the whole not racist whatsoever thing of saying Devon get the tails <laughs> uh, yeah well, um and Bully Ray is uh, still working and is still under contract, I believe, with Impact. Does it really matter at this point? Yes, because we are going to see more collaboration between Impact and the WWE. What say you, Calico? Okay, match. Um, they got the ECW spots all in. Uh, the O to the Dudley's all in. Um, the right team won after getting their ass beat for the longest. Uh, Montez getting some mic time. <clears throat> really good for him. Um, but yeah, this match did what it needed to do. Uh, uh, how many I I will give it I will give it a three and a half. Can we go? Mm, three and a half because Bubba put the glasses on and then started getting the pop and everybody kind of got into East CW nostalgia. I give it three. Okay. Uh, Calico. Oh, we got LA Knight defeating AJ Styles in 12 minutes and 25 seconds. Um, you know, whenever you have AJ Styles in a match, uh, it's never going to be bad. So, um, yeah, this was great shit, uh, to say the least. Um, what say you, Scudo? I want to, uh, I want to slap the shit out of whoever thought telling him his new theme was good. Uh, I mean, it's... What the hell is that, man? It's just like... That was literally the only bad thing about this match. Uh, this was... Th this is what a filler that's not really de designed to be filler should go. This is how, you know, a, a, a WrestleMania match that's non-title, this is how it should go. Uh, the right, uh, the right person won. Uh, and uh, now, and AJ and Knight will get a return uh, match uh, next week on SmackDown in a uh, number one contenders match.
uh, I mean, this really was a match you didn't want to get up from your seat and miss. So, I am, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it uh, four, four, I give it four and a half, but I have to take away half for AJ's new awful theme. So, four stars. Kalika? Yeah, who the fuck thought it was a good idea to change that No Limit record, that masterful No Limit record sounding entrance to this dubstep country ass shit? <laughs> Threw me off. I was like, wait a minute, that's his music now? Like, oh, god damn it. He's, uh, he's retiring. <laughs> but, anyways, um, the right guy won. L.A. Knight won. Got the Mania debut. Uh, came in the Camaro. The only thing I hate about it is that some old couple won the goddamn fucking super char- the, 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 the the fucking car. And I'm like, what the fuck them old niggas gonna do with this car? But <laughs> uh, with that being said, the right person won. It was a solid four. I think um, AJ did what he needed to do to get the guy over, and and the right guy won. So I mean, considering the LA Knight wasn't there last year, and he was the talk of the town, for him to come in this year and get the win, you know, huge for him. I give it a four as well. But now we have. Um... Triple threat match for United States Championship. Uh, championship. Uh, Logan Paul with so speed uh, defeated Kevin I, Owens. I sh- I show speed, and I didn't even know who this who this guy fucking was. Clearly, Randy Orton didn't either, because the the, the best match mo- moment of the match is when he RKO'd him on that table. And you could legitimately see in Randy Orton's face, he did not know who the fuck this guy was. See, see now I, I will make an observation here. We always ragged on Vince for not being, uh, not for not keeping up with essentially pop culture in general. Now, and I don't want, I don't want to think that Triple H had anything to do with the you know the booking of this match, but the, having a, you know was it going to be Jake Paul again? Was it going to be KSI again? Was it going to be that guy they're only referring to as Jeff, which apparently we're all supposed to know. Um, Now, instead of someone being out of date with pop culture, we have a a millennial who is who who believes everyone is familiar uh, with internet celebrity culture. Yeah. So. Honestly, this was a great match, in my opinion. Um, there was a lot of great um, storytelling between uh, Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Um, you know, attacking Logan Paul and then realizing that they, they have to fight each other and then fighting each other and Logan Paul taking uh, advantage of that. And obviously, the golf call um, entrance was fantastic. Um, I, I really like this, even though Logan Paul won. Um, what say you, Kaluka? I mean, you knew Logan Paul was going to win because odd man out always wins. Come on, man. Like, that was a given. Um, but, uh, once again, a good match. 
it solidifies Logan Paul's reign, as if you will. Um, it because most people, including some Kevin Owens, and everybody just felt like it was flukish. Um, but it, it it's legit. So he's legit with his reign. It makes his reign stands on its own. And so yeah, it was a good match. Great, right guy won. Um, solid four with the storytelling involved, uh, especially when uh, Orton tried to RKO KO. It was like, oh, and everybody was just like, in the whole crowd, you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a thing. Uh, I mean, I think I, I, I really kind of think I got my point across with, uh, with uh, the crux of the match. I will say that this is probably Logan Paul's best match yet. Which is saying something. Which is which is saying something because the man has yet to have a really terrible match. I mean, the Rey Mysterio match was almost up there. Okay, I I, I will I will uh, concede to that one. Uh, I would. I would like to see Logan, you know, do more than just talk. Uh, I mean, we already had we already had one champion who didn't show up uh, for you know every event, and We we didn't need it, you know. Somebody holding a mid card title, doing the same. So if they want, yeah, they want that U.S. title to still be a fixture, then let Logan Paul, you know, live up to what. He can clearly do what he can clearly do well than quite a few guys today can. Uh, How many stars so, you this one? I I will give it four. Calico. Four solid. Yeah, solid four. Thank you. All right, we got Bailey defeating Io Sky to uh, win the WWE Women's Championship in 14 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, fantastic match. Um, maybe, uh, I could maybe question why Bailey was an Egyptian queen, but other than that, I didn't have any problems with this. <laughs> Uh, oh, and the, two great wrestlers. Uh, there's, um, Bailey is... Like a team park in San Jose or some shit like that. Yeah. It, it's not, like, it's not really a theme park. It's actually just a, you know, a public park that, you know, just happens to have an Egyptian theme. Oh. What was your thoughts on the match, Scooter? It was great storytelling that started on night one with uh, at least uh, for the for the most part uh, the rest of damage control. Uh, being, uh, you know, uh, taken out, and I'm using quote fingers here, uh, 
uh, and just letting this be a true one-on-one -on -one match, I honestly thought we we could get you know hug life back. Never going to. Oh, I'm all about that hug life. Yeah, um, I know, right? This it, it was a great match. I, I never realized that there are actually uh, that the words of role model are actually said in her theme music. Uh, a a great match in the in the right place on the card, uh, and uh, I was not disappointed, especially when uh, the crowd started up with "Hey, hey, Bailey." I want to know oh, if you'll hit us with a copyright strike. Uh, I knew you would love that. <laughs> uh, again, great match. Right woman won. Uh, you know, if, and not, need, not needing anybody to do it is this really, I think, the strongest. Uh, you know, idea to come out of this match is that you know Bailey doesn't need anyone to actually get anywhere. So I will give I will give this match. I'll, I'm gonna give it four and a half stars. Here we go. Yeah, that's been. I mean, I'm trying to think. When was the last time Bailey won a match solo? You would have to maybe go to 2019, if I'm being honest. So, and it was good that it was a 1v1 because it showed the personal. The how personal it was with them too, um, especially considering that Bailey feels like she groomed her. Oh, um, bad choice of words there. As a wrestler, <laughs> took her under her wing, you know that type of deal. Um, and even with it, you kind of see Bailey have these, not a many, but a slight hesitations. And even when she won the title, it almost kind of like she wanted to go back and like go to EO for a bit, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and it, tough titty. So yeah, it showed like Bailey showed the the emotional aspect of it of having to deal with someone who you considered a friend. So yeah, four and a half, solid. I'll go with four and a half as well. Right. And that brings us to our main event, Bloodline Rules, for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Cody Rhodes ended Roman Reigns' 1,316-day uh, reign as WWE Champion. Um, arguably... The biggest moment in pro wrestling history, if I'm being completely honest. The match, if we're comparing matches, the, the one at 39 was a better wrestling match. But this match was pure WWE. This was, it had all of the, yep. the wrestling, the hardcore shit. The Gaga, everything that everybody knows WWE for. 
um, you know, me and Scooter watched Stone Cold vs. The Rock at 15, and this was somewhat eerily reminiscent of that. So it was definitely an old school classic WWE match told to the highest of standards, I would say. Um, and, you know, I was kind of worried that all of the run-ins would maybe take away from Cody's moment, but it didn't. Cody st still got the biggest pop. And that whole set of celebration at the end it's what it's what people's been waiting for, for since he came back at 38. So, yeah, all around fantastic shit. Coleco. When I say the last ten minutes of that match was the most and. The most climatic 10 minutes of your life in that stadium. Because everything just went from, it went from, oh, to, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, ah. It was just bananas. Like, it was literally like a ro the emotional roller coaster that only wrestling can bring, personified. Uh, the the match itself, yeah, you can make the argument that it was a better wrestling match last year. Uh, this year, the reason they did it that way because it was going to take more than because this this match wasn't about the wrestling at this point, right? Like that's why it wasn't a wrestling match. It was the the match. The wrestling was more secondary than trying to them trying to defeat the sun, if that makes sense. Right. Um, and the storytelling in this match, and it was literally what fifteen years of callbacks and stories in ten minutes. And it was just bananas. The fact that, let me see, who Cena came out the hell, well, first the Usos, of course, they took each other out. Solo comes out, he's pissed. And, and at that point, it almost, everything that happened yesterday made sense. Because have you noticed, and this is the one thing I was noticing, you remember every time Solo would come in, he kept having a, Pump up brains, pumping them up, pumping them up, pumping them up, you right? Right. So what happened last night made total sense. So even in that regard, but let's just take that out of the picture. So Solo helps, Cena comes out, he's had beef with Solo for the year, they lost, he takes him out. Uh, Roman comes out, I mean, The Rock comes out, that's a callback, freaking, tw what, 28 and 29? So Rock gets his revenge on that front. The Shield music plays. Bro, that place went fucking bananas because everyone thought it was Dean Ambrose. You know, for a split second, I thought that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, but, but that was a call back to what Seth said. I will be your shield. I will be your shield. Yeah. And, it, and it was also a call uh -huh. back to Seth's plan. original sin. Plan B. Yeah. His plan B. So he he basically dovetailed the selfishness of him. Because when you think about it, even when he was winning tag titles, he was still in a selfish way. Like, you really, even as a tag champion, you really didn't see him as a tag teamer. Or a person that would be on a team. Right. And it showed with the cracks with Cody being on, like, teams with Cody and teaming with, you know what I'm saying? So it all showed that thing. And he realized the one thing he had to sacrifice and, and get justification for himself was that. And then it also showed the Roman 
is the way he is now because he has trust issues because of Seth. That that fucking chair thing when he was like, who to hit? And when he hit Seth, it was like he, he never let it go. He got over it, but he never let it go. Yep. And, and, and that cost it a match. Now, Rock, the only thing that made sense for The Undertaker to come in uh, is... A, to make it a fair fight, but B, and everyone's hoping Stone Cold, but Stone Cold has nothing to do with Roman. Uh, This story was all about Roman more than it was about Rock. uh, I I mentioned that when we got around to this, I would uh, mention how uh, while... Uh, Steve Austin was tri- uh, was uh, triple uh, triple H's plan A. Uh, uh, Undertaker was plan B, and if you ask me, a bit more relevant to both Roman and Cody. Undertaker wanting to avenge his terrible loss. From WrestleMania 33, uh, in a match some people deny having uh, even having take place. Uh, it took place because I got the goddamn plaque, thinking it was his last match. Don't get me started. <laughs> uh, um, but the Undertaker was involved with Dusty's uh, with. His, Undertaker's first match in the WWE involved Dusty. Oh, that's true. Good. Uh, and uh, technically, the Undertaker's first uh, decision came at the hands of Dusty. Uh, so, not. Uh, uh, I mean. All, all this clusterfuckery and in the best way. Uh, you know, again, that whole Seth, you know, being the shield and everything. That, uh, you know, uh, Cena, you know, The Rock, and you know, w- wondering if there's a <laughs> a potential Rock Cena three. God, no. Uh, I mean, th- this was, you know, this was an Attitude Era main event. And considering that now, uh, the, uh, the top tier talent are going to be allowed to use uh, less conservative language uh, like they did 25 years ago. So, it's it's almost capturing the best of the Attitude Era and combining it with the current era. Uh, the, the match the match was unbelievable and I really thought for a minute I saw uh, Undertaker reaction guy in the crowd. He was there. Uh, he was there. Uh, okay, good. I'm not going nuts. Uh, he was there. Well, the new, I guess, the former Lesnar guy, now CM Punk guy. I, whatever identity crisis he's going through, he was there. Yeah. <laughs> identity crisis uh, guy. There you go. Identity crisis guy. He was there. The the hit the all the OGs were there. So yeah. Uh, it was just. A perfect 
perfect main event. And now my opinion on 39's main event has changed drastically. And I think that's a I think that's a good thing. Really? How did it change? Well, for 39, uh, which was last year. Yeah, for 39, seeing that that it it depends if we could actually legit prove that the way 39 went down was to get to 40. You know, to finish the story, so to speak. So, I mean, other, I mean, aside from that, perfect, uh, perfect, perfect main event to me. And to piggyback on your point, I, I think that makes sense because when you look at 35 and how Kofi won the title, and it was Kofi Mania, and the crowd was happy, but they were kind of already ready to like have him lose the title. Maybe this year of Cody, or that 2023 of Cody, going through 2023 to see if the people even cared if he won the title. Because we've always had those like main events where, prime example, when Nakamura lost... And he went heel, and then he really did. People really didn't gauge interest in him being in the title picture, so he kind of wallowed his stock, in a sense. Honestly, him losing last year was probably the best thing to happen to him because the people stuck with him regardless. Right. And that's hard to do. It is. That uh, that's the hardest thing to keep people invested in you even after you fail. Because once you succeed, everybody's already looking to the next person. Right. But to keep them engaged even when you lose to the point that they want need to see you win and get it, which is an art. I think I don't know what these roads got. I mean, I guess it skipped Dustin, but I, <laughs> but but. But du- but Dusty and Cody could get people to care about them winning or wanting to them to actually achieve it, which is art in itself. That means people care about you. Yeah. All right, uh, Skittle, how many stars you get? I will for the first time in wrestling with history. I will give it 5.5. 5. Hmm. This, people may think this is a hot take. That is the greatest match in WWE's history. That is the greatest story to be ever told in wrestling history, in a match. That thing is, that thing was Omega Okada on steroids, as far as storytelling. And it literally took, I I, I was talking to somebody, I was like, well, New Japan, I always loved the way that they called it back, but WWE had one hell of a callback in that match. They had callback after callback after callback after callback. And you just like, and it was crazy because it's 70,000 people just, their brains are already going down memory lane and then something else comes up and they have to go back memory lane for that and then it goes to something else. And, they, and it, you see what I'm saying? So it was just like the greatest emotional roller coaster ever in WrestleMania history. I can't even quantify it with a number, to be quite honest.
Seriously, I, I, I damn near want to say infinity. Because <laughs> it's that is because the way the way every part because as much as and Scooter said it right, it was a clusterfuck, but it was beautiful chaos. It was a beautiful chaos. And and it wasn't full of people coming out just for the sake of coming out. Player, it was literally, this is your life, Roman Reigns. And everybody that he made enemies with came to fucking get to him. To the point that when Cody won, who were the people that surrounded Cody? Everybody that had issues with Roman. Orton, Zane, Owens, Seth, Cena. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it wasn't... Because usually when the people win, like, a face wins a title like that, every like, the whole locker room is coming out. But it was literally only the select few that had issues with the bloodline. Yeah. That's, like, that is storytelling. And then if you see Orton's face... Oh, yeah. And in the in the fact that you can go and and even though it it ended a one story, this story dovetails into other stories. Because now when Seth comes back, guess what? Seth, you could get Seth Roman, Seth Cody, Seth Punk, uh, Seth Drew. You could get um Punk Cody. You could get Punk. Roman, you could get Punk Solo. You could the the fact that this story ending is laying ground to a multiverse of possibilities is why I think it's like the greatest match ever. So you're giving Infinity stories. Infinity. I don't I don't think you understand being there. It was literally math mething. Think of every high drug that you took and 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 made you feel good and multiply it times ten thousand. Alright. Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well I'm not gonna beat uh infinity stars, so uh it definitely was an up five star match, one hundred percent. Um, you know, um, staying in the basis of you know the five star system. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if the sure you could, uh, if you want to go, um, you know, more than that, probably seven. All right, um. I think we're all unanimous. Uh, night two, thumbs up, right? Thumbs up, and somehow they have made it to create two more thumbs that are up. <laughs> Pretty much. I think, like, <laughs> this night two made WrestleMania 40 one of... This is easily number one for me, WrestleMania. I could say, to me, me being in the in the vicinity, forty was number one, thirty was number two, thirty one was three, the, and but this really felt like it was the the changing of a guard, right? Like when Stephanie was like, "It's a new era in night two. It literally was, it literally felt like it. It, it in, in unlike 30, it's going to be sustainable. Because as much as I like, as much as 30 was a change of the guard, it was a change of the card because the people had forced that change and then they relegated back into their bullshit. But now this one feels like it's going to be back to what it was, 
the story arc telling of of wrestling. Uh, biggest thumbs up all the way. Biggest winners, obviously, to me, Cody, Seth, and CM Punk, nonetheless. Uh, <laughs> so Cody, Seth, CM Punk, Mello, oh no, Trick. Those were my four biggest winners of WrestleMania weekend. Now, I'm WrestleMania as a whole night, and this isn't just including, uh, not just night two, but night one and two. As a whole, as a show, where do you rank this WrestleMania 40 out of the 40 WrestleManias, Scooter? Well, comparing uh, my top five WrestleManias, which are, which are 19, uh, 28, uh, 33, mm-hmm. uh, 3, and... And eighteen. Um, I, I I dare say uh, it uh, it knocks eighteen out of my top five, and uh, comes in second behind Seattle, uh, Seattle and WrestleMania nineteen. So top five. Yeah. Yeah, top two if you really want to. Uh... Coleco? Hmm. Oh, man. This is easily the best two night storytelling of how night one crescendoed into night two. So, I in the two night format, easily the best. Uh, as far as storytelling. Um, overall for me, (sighs) I, oh gosh, to me, this, it's hard to, and maybe it's recency bias in me, but to me, it's hard not to see this as number one in my book. Because to me, I would have said, My top five is probably 40, 30, 17, 19, <laughs> shit, what would be number five for me? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm thinking, hmm. I mean, Michael, when Michael's won his first title, that was oh, 12? 12, yeah, 11, 12. So 12 to me, because I, I, I'm a HBK kid. So, yeah, that's probably a top five for me. But to me, it's number one, because the consequences that happened in the main event in night one affected everything in night two, as far as the major players. Well, if we're talking, for me personally, if we're only talking night two, then yeah, this is up there um, top five WrestleManias of all time. But can Considering that, you know, we have to attach night one to it, and it didn't necessarily live up to the expectation, I would 
say that this was more top 10 for me rather than top 5. Man, tough crowd. <laughs> Just, I mean, there was some really good WrestleManias as well. Maybe, you know, obviously the story with Cody and Roman, you know, not top, that's going to be number one on a lot of lists. Um, and again, if it was just night two, it would have. But uh, night, night one had to be a bit. <laughs> oh. I think, and the reason I, I say the end of night one was crucial because it set night two. But I can make the argument you could have night, the main event of night uh, one be the opener of night two. And it could, it would still have the same effect. Uh, mm-hmm. no, because of the simple fact that Seth had to start off night two. Oh, true. That, that's yeah. what made it a bigger, because con- Seth going into the match, knowing that he had a, had he was risking something for something greater and he lost what he writ you know, he, he took the gamble and lost. What? I think that that story in itself because it wasn't just the story of Cody getting the story I mean the two most overarching stories, well the biggest three was really Drew trying to get the win. In no particular order. Drew trying to get the win in front of people, which mattered to him the most. Seth redeeming himself, and then the story. All right. I believe that will conclude our coverage of WrestleMania Night 1 and 2, um, and this episode as a whole. Um, Thank you for listening. If you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment, but on YouTube and CastBox. This was sponsored by Rogue Energy and Tara Coffee. Um, join us uh, Tuesday as we interview Joey Mayberry, and on Wednesday as we interview Mitch Claw. Uh, and follow the show at Wrestling with E, but on X, Red, and Instagram for information on who we're interviewing when we're interviewing them. Links to those interviews can come up more. Follow me personally at JJ993. Welcome to find Coleco. I am Coleco. Yeah, you saw my pictures, man. You saw where I was. Yes, I did. <laughs> Boy, you, when I say it, but man, I'm telling you. And where, <laughs> <laughs> and where can we find Scooter? As always, find me on X at Scooter Dust. Again, the profile pick. Identification contest. Nobody's guessed it yet. Nobody's guessed what my profile picture is. Uh, that is still very much open. And if you are able to guess what it is, you will win a year long subscription to Peacock. For Coleco Yachts and Scooter Dust, I'm James J, and this has been a last name of it. Entertainment. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys, we appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.